So check this out, guys. I decided to do these little things uh, about two hours ago. These dried outside all day. This has heat. So I'm just gonna put them right there. So pine, I like it because it burns super fast. I will use hardwoods, oak, because it does hold its ground and it holds its shape and it will actually, you know, survive a lot longer. So you can actually pick up that one piece and then put it into your chamber that you decide to burn with. At any point, if somebody has a question, just stop me and ask the question, okay? I have so, a question. Yeah. Um, so I saw the grate over the fire. I know that in the video that you, you showed us, like it had the, the pieces way further out from the fire than that. Is that like, that won't get it too hot just being over the fire, seeing as like heat rises or? When I put it on, I didn't have that big flame going. So I'm gonna watch that flame because if that flame starts to lick those pieces, I'm gonna blow them up. Dude, the nice thing is that I feel some good heat. And at some point we're gonna have to, and I'm already moving them down because they, the fire's kicking in. Yeah, I'm just trying to rush those. Where these pieces, they've been sitting there. Um, they've been sitting outside all day in the nice. Actually, I picked them up and they were, they were warm from the sun. Questions? So with a, like, a, um, like one of those Weber charcoal grills, it would be pretty much the same concept, right? Pretty much, like it's even the same shape, except mine is, I don't know, it's three feet in diameter. But check out this little grill, grill to go. This is one that uh, I found a long time ago. We're gonna use that one today also. So I'm gonna start going through the list of things that you guys need to have. I've got the bellows that I use in my fireplace. Yeah, sometimes it's just hard to get the fire going, right? Buckets, the buckets will contain different things. Sometimes the buckets will contain hay, sawdust, water, you know, so different things. Eye protection, we always want to have eye protection. Heated proof gloves, if you have them, a hose that is set up with water, lighter or matches, a shovel, and then tongs. So I have my bellows right there. I have my fire starters. I have my striker, right, my, um, my lighter right there. I do have an ax that is not on the list. So if we can add that, uh, Susan, to the list. Um, tongs that we use, right? At, at some point, these are going to get too hot for me to touch. So I will be able to pick them up with this. I will be able to turn them over, hopefully, and not break them, right? Why, do you, why are you grilling bananas? Just to eat them? No. Color those are going to give me color. What those are going to be giving me color. This is moving along pretty nice. What I can bellows? already feel it. A bellows is what we use to blow air onto oh, so okay. you know so right, so yeah. we use that to get the fire going gigantic tongues and then that coat hanger will be used to move pieces these are going to get pretty hot i do have a little propane tank my goggles my striker okay now depending on where you live do what i actually have a permit with the fire marshal so before I started today, I went, you know, I called the fire department. I will call them up and I'll say, can I do one of my fires? So in other words, know whether you need to call and get a permit or know if you should not be doing it. Look at the dry, see how it's drying pretty quick? Going through containments. Containment means how we keep the fire in place. So we use bricks charcoal grill, cinder blocks, a metal basin, metal drum, metal trash can. I can burn in here. And I do have a brick that is a high fire in there. You can see the ash from the last firing. You can see the holes on the side. The holes are so that the fire breathes and this thing will go pretty high temperature wise. This is perfect for sagger fires, for smoke fires. I took some of my fire brick, I just kind of grated the dirt and I just put fire brick around just so that it contains the fire. And then I took an old Raku metal container that I use, it's got a hole in it. And again, just to contain the fire. I have an old grill, we're gonna fill it up with charcoal and we're gonna use wood and we're gonna use that one also. And then again, this one we could be using 
But what I'm going to use it for today is simply, let's just get the wood going. That's going to be my main place where I'm going to burn the wood and then pick it up and move it to the individual chambers a little bit at a time. And once the individual chambers are hot enough and I can start cranking it up, and then I got four pots and then some little pieces. One of the things that I want to do with these flat little guys is I actually want to heat them up and then pull them out of the fire and see if I can get it to smoke feathers on them, smoke hair, which would be pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put more wood and then start taking some off. I'm gonna soak it a little bit more while I continue to talk so that by the time I'm finishing with the conversation, I'm gonna start working on uh, putting the pieces in fire. How do you know um, if a brick is high fire? If you go to Home Depot, they're going to call it fire brick. I know these are fire brick because of how solid and the color and the shape. You're going to find a lot of red brick. And I don't have any red brick here because they will melt in my firings. Except here's one. This is not a fire brick. And one of the reasons I can tell, again, is the size. So look at the difference. So I have a question. Yeah. If I, I don't think I'll be able to, yeah. but if I wanted to try that, it has to be on the dirt. Uh, as opposed to what, concrete? Uh-huh. Yeah, I would not burn on concrete because a lot of concrete will begin to pop. And okay. uh, yeah, you're gonna, it's going to be popping whatever moisture it absorbs, especially if it's nice and porous. The idea for this project is to learn how to do this. So yeah. depending on where you touch it, it's already at a thousand degrees. So that would have blown up the pieces a long time ago. Well, if you don't have one of those fancy things you got there to see how hot it is, how, how, how do you know? Look at, um, one. Looks like fire to me. <laughs> yeah. So can you see the coal at the bottom, how hot that is? That, once it starts glowing like that, you know it's over 800 degrees. When you have, something that is glowing that intense and i'm not talking about the fire i'm talking about i'm talking about the coals that are at the bottom right there uh, okay so when the wood starts to turn to like embers yeah you know it's pretty hot okay i'm gonna go over the rest of it really quick so that i can i can get going on the pieces and hopefully i won't blow anything up okay uh are you guys gonna make fun of me if i blow things up Yes, 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 yes. There's a chance. <laughs> so you guys want to know? Box to laugh. Does it make sense to um, instead of trying to dry them on a grill or whatever, just to put them in? Can you put? Can you dry these in a convection oven? Yes. What what temperature would you set it? Because you said like 200 degrees. You're risking popping them. Uh, 212 degrees it blows up. So see, let's say that um, damage in my oven either, you know. You can put it in your oven. You can put it at 100 degrees in your oven. Once that piece clears 212 degrees, you know that you have uh, taken care of all the drying. It's, um, just to let it bone dry by itself, no? Well, that's what I that's what I did outside. So what you were just talking about with the oven, that would be like the equivalent to, to like disc firing it before doing a raku firing or something? Is that what no, you're that, would be, that would be like eliminating as much moisture as possible. It's like bone dry. It would be like putting it inside the heat box. Yeah, making it bone dry. Oh. It would be like, you know what? I'm going to reduce my chances. I'm going to put it in the oven. I'm going to make sure that... It's completely dry. Like right there where those pieces are, if those flames hit them too hard, those are leather hard just a little while ago. It's possible that I'll blow them up. They're already nice and warm. Remember, I made these about an hour before class started. You can light it up with cardboard, charcoal, firewood, kindling, leaves, newspaper, pallets, pine needles, scrap wood, sticks, all the above. Okay. Things for color that you guys need to start collecting and drying. Banana peels, bones, coals, coffee grounds, copper scraps, cow pies, driftwood, fertilizer, leaves, metal scraps, miracle grow, nails, oxidized metal, salt, sawdust, seaweed, steel wool, tea leaves, vegetable matter. 
Okay. I've got my combustibles. I've got my paper. I've got my miracle grow. I've got my charcoal. I've got wood. And then I have, I am going to try to smoke the feathers. I think it'll be cool. So I've got my feathers. I've got all my copper and I'm going to try to do a little sagger. I've found these. Look at that. They stack up beautifully. Put a piece on the bottom, put a piece on the top, and then I'm going to be good to go. I've got my steel wool. I've got my aluminum foil for saggers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start preparing some pieces um, so that you guys can see how I prepare them. Check this out. I have a piece of uh, foil. I know that these pieces have been drying for a long time. I think I'm going to do this little guy with the foil paper and I'm going to use some um, steel wool. Ooh, it's like outdoor cooking. Uh, do you wrap it in the aluminum foil? Yep. And do you do that with all the pieces? Or is the foil oh, just no, for no, a special just, effect? Some are just going to go straight in like that. You said foil paper. Is that aluminum foil? Like Aluminum foil. Aluminum yeah. foil. Okay. So, now, won't the aluminum foil like keep some of the heat from actually like getting into the piece? So would that like change the the rate at which it fires or it will but but aluminum foil is also metal that is going to allow it to go through where some of the other sagger fires like for instance if i put something in here yes the metal is going to prevent the the um heat from going through so here's some copper so i know this has salt um, I know it has some copper and some steel wool, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and pack it up. This one is going to go in by itself, just so that we can see what they're going to what they're going to be doing, right? And then I'm going to put them in their respective uh, place. This one, I do want to use a decent amount of steel wool on this one. If it's going in by itself, you don't need to wrap it, though, right? Yeah, you don't need to wrap it. Now okay. remember, this is this is like we're just trying to bring it up to bisque temperature. Well, no, I take it back. Bisque temperature is one thousand eight hundred and something most of the time. So is that a ball of paper? Wrong. Steel wool. Where do you get that? Hardware source. I just happen to have it. I have a lot of it. What what kind of effect does it make? It gives you some black lines, some coppery lines, and this is copper. And it gives you green lines. Now, granted, I don't know how high we're gonna get. Well, I have like some some like um, like wire, just like hanging wire and like jewelry making type wires. Would that create some kind of cool effects? Or yeah, you have to try them. You have to try them because when I started doing this, I, I used to do a lot of uh, fires and like trash cans and like that big 50 gallon drum right there. Um, the nails of the pallets were the only things that I was using and some copper. Put more copper on this one because... So um, like what kind of nails? Like like normal... What are nails made of? Is that a dumb question? Iron. <laughs> iron. So one of the cool things is that okay. when I was learning how to do this is I was just putting pallets as a, as a fuel source. The nails from the pallets themselves were giving me most of the color that I was getting on my pieces. So they look very earthy, very uh, rustic. They look like something you dug out of an excavation. So now, how does that work? Is that like the, the, the rust on it? <clears throat> Is that like it oxidizing within the fire onto the actual yeah. piece? Yep. And you think like one of my favorite materials is iron oxide. I use iron oxide, iron sulfate. I use a lot of iron washes. So this is just gonna go like that. And we're gonna find out what it does, you know? I mean, it may or may not do anything. This one's gonna go in this bin. This one is going to go in this bin right here. Uh, so are you gonna make separate fires for each of those in those bins? Normally I would be doing them all in one, but because of what it is that I'm doing, you know, it's a class. I am going to do a lot of different approaches so that you guys can quickly see. This one was in that large 30 gallon container and this is what he did. This was in the little barbecue grill 
And then you guys are going to be able to say, okay, there is a difference based on what I am using. And that's, that's the plan is that you guys get a feel for, all right, I can see this. I can see how different things are happening because of um, the way it's being fired. So this one here, I am going to put it on top of a brick so that it goes a little higher uh, as it sits on the bottom. I'm going to get in the open fire right there. And the brick by itself doesn't create any specific kind of effect, does it? It's just for functional purposes? It's, if we can get the piece elevated off the bottom, it's going to be affected more by the heat. And, and if you think, okay, so heat rises, right? So you can picture this piece. There's going to be glowing coals all in here feeding it where if it's on the bottom, then it's not gonna be getting hot on the bottom at all, right? So I'm gonna put it on top of the brick in the center, and I'm gonna put this one there. I don't want it to roll. I need to remember that these things are green. I'm gonna- So you don't want them just sitting on the ground. You want them elevated a little bit. Preferably not just sitting in the ground. Okay. So that piece is, whoa, that hot. So what does that tell you if it's 300 degrees, 240? That it would <clears throat> explode a piece that wasn't uh, bone dry? That it would have already blown up if it was going to blow up. Those are nice and hot. But a lot of times we're going to be starting cold like this. So I'm going to show you both approaches. These might blow up if I don't play it right. I'm going to do a little sagger on that piece and then I'm going to get moving. Wait, what if it like blows up in your face? <laughs> You don't want it to blow up in your face. I, that's why you have eye protection. Are you, are you nervous? I'm nervous for you. Try not to keep I'm your nervous. face near fire. <laughs> <laughs> Who's nervous? You guys, you guys want me to blow one up? Kind of. No. Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah. I want to see what it looks like because I'm always I'm curious about what happened to mine. There will be a so yeah. it's going to look like fumbled pieces of clay. No, I want to see if it shoots. If it shoots like Ashley's saying. Yeah, off. morbid curiosity <laughs> over here. <laughs> trying to put him in danger. All right, so. Vicente, Vicente yeah. I have a question. What was in the one that you put, that you wrapped it in foil? Who remembers? Uh, uh, copper. Steel there was, wool. yeah, some steel wool. And salt, right? Yeah. Steel wool. wool. Yeah. You have steel wool, salt, and copper wrapped up. All right, so guys, look. 230, 240. All right. I'm going to put that one. I'm going to put that one in the fire. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to blow up. It's going to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> I really want right. to. You what? I kind of want it to blow up. There's like a little child inside of me that wants to see something blow yeah. up. You want to see it blow up. Man, you guys are brutal. I have a question. Mark really wants to see it blow up. Blow it up. Blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> the aluminum that you put in the older piece, would it burn out? Would it burn? Mm hmm Yeah, it will burn. Aluminum will burn. All right, who thinks it's going to blow up? How hot was the piece before? 200, it was 240 something. Oh. And you right, said so it would break if it's like 215. Right. So, 265. Alright, so, would you guys just put it straight in there? Like, be that reckless? Hell yeah. You would? No, it has to slowly rise. Alright. Being reckless. Like, I'm stupid. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> right? I know that I'm not supposed to put it in there. Just plop it in there. So I'm just going to put it right there. I'm gonna step back because it might pop. There it goes. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Oh, it's like popcorn. Oh, this is insane. I feel like this is like one of those like videos Sounds they watch on like Snapchat. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Satisfying. Oh. <laughs> wow. It's completely it's like. That's and it crazy. is literally jumping like popcorn. It's like popcorn. Yeah. Now that's just the moisture just popping each time. That's fun. I like check that. it out. It's almost it's almost half an inch thick, right? So because it's almost half an inch thick, I might not be able to touch the surface, but it has not completely has not completely 
uh, drive through in the court. So, so that's like being reckless and just saying, all right, that was kind of stupid. I'm glad I made more, right? So we can't do it like that. So check this out. That one is in there, okay? Now you guys just saw what happened with that other one. On the other screen, how I'm shoveling them from the big pit. Oh, I see now. Right? So I'm just putting it around the outer edges. Oh, that's like I'm cheating. Gonna, and I'm gonna let it go nice and slow. That's, that's so nice. I want you guys to keep a track. Somebody keep time. What time is it? 5.22. Oh, that's too hot. This is, it's, uh, yeah, there's something wrong with my, oh, that's pretty hot already. Uh-oh, is it going to explode? I hope not. Maybe the aluminum will protect it a little bit. Too hot, too hot. Wait, how long you want this to go through? I'm going to spread it out three or four hours. Wait, three so hours? if you don't have that temperature thingy. All right, the time is starting. Three hours. I get out. Three hours. If you know, what I wanted you guys to know is, see how the peas are sitting on top? It is not directly on the fire, right? Mm -hmm. The piece right now says that it's 300 and something degrees. It still hasn't blown up, okay? But look at the glowing embers that are on there. Look at this little guy. That little guy, that is gently getting warm. Feel it. Okay, but it is not hitting it directly. I'm going to be able to get it up there nice and slow. What color would you get from stainless steel? I've never used stainless steel. Stainless steel is such a high melting point, over 2,000 degrees, that the highest we get on these is 1,600. 1, so I've never used stainless steel for any of this. The only way that I've used them is where I'm taking and kind of just building a chamber around it for protection. Mm -hmm. So now what if you had like a, uh, so like, you know, those inflatable mattresses, the pumps for it, pretty much made it like a blast furnace. Would that be, would that be no. too hot for a piece of clay? Once the piece is glowing, then you can take advantage of things like that because then you're really going to start pushing it. Mm -hmm. Once, once my, once my clay is glowing and I know that it's like eight, nine hundred degrees, I'm gonna start going nice and fast, you know. So like this one, this one's already getting nice and warm. Yeah, there's no way that I could pick that up. I'm gonna start working on this one and this one right here now. So that'll provide some gentle heat. Not want any kind of flame hitting the piece. Not yet. But well, what if I don't have like a big garbage can thing like that to transfer yeah like you know how you're transferring the the hot embers pretty much so then what you're gonna do is you just wait for it all that one fire to turn to embers or no maybe i should do one of those huh yeah i mean i don't yes. know I feel like yeah, that's I how i'm gonna be yes. doing it most of the us one like that. Doing... i only have one fire pit yeah yes please just do it I only have that kind of thing you're saying? Yeah. I would start a fire off to the side. Now, preferably, I'm gonna start the fire so that my heat is transferring over with the air flow. So now I'm getting all this heat right here. All this heat is transferring over. I do have to be careful that I do not have a fire, a flame that is gonna be hitting them. If it's kind of windy, you pop, you. Don't want to put it too close. Yeah, let's say that it's a little windier, okay? So I might need to be out here as opposed to that close to it. If That's I a have a regular fire pit built up with pavers at my house, yeah. I could just yep. put my pieces on around the edge on top. Yes. Let's say that this is my fire pit. You can just like line them around. Like, for example, if your fire was in the middle of that. Right there, right? Yeah, up, like that. And then I'll turn and then I'll turn, and then I'll turn, right? Yes. Nice and hot all the way around. I would have my brick, I would shovel everything away from it. And then I would put my piece in the center, everything away from it. And then I'm gonna let it sit there and warm up. And then I'm slowly going to move the fire over. Right now, I'm trying to get fire here going. And in a little bit, I'm slowly gonna begin to move it over. 
54 degree, 55, 200, Yeah, serious fire going in there now. Yeah, that's why I like that pit because of that. you notice how the piece has not had any flame and it is just gently this type of heat is not going to blow it up as long as you give it time to absorb the heat now this little flame right there that will blow it up so i'm going to move it off to the side there's a little flame there yeah and that's okay. just to get it to big bisque fire right we're not going to call it bisque we're just going to say a primitive technique for finishing pieces because they're not even, they're not even going to get to bisque temperature. So how will we fire them after this? They're going to be the finished product. Okay, so what I was asking is that with the kilns, we have to go through the bisque fire and then we do the actual fire. With right. this, you just do one single fire and that's it. Yeah, and if you play everything uh, wrong, once now, some of these you might say, well, nothing, nothing's cool about that piece in the center right there. But then again, I didn't do anything. But then you might think, oh my gosh, I can't believe the brown and the black and the gray and the fire looking surfaces that you have on there. So they alone are going to give you a particular look. And there's people that this is the only way they fire their work because this is the only way to get the finish that you guys are going to see. Vicente was talking about it last week that like this, like it's going to absorb the moisture if you don't put anything over it, like a clear coat or anything after. You could burnish it so like really well. You burnish it and then there's like some kind of wax we can put on after and that's, that's after close you fire it? Yeah, after you fire it. Right. Um... By our standards today, I believe he was saying that it's not, you know, up to par for eating, but our ancestors ate out of them. And we're, we're all kind of alive in here. Oh, I mean, hey, their life expectancy is back to like, I mean, or it can't be too bad, right? Do you think this will blow up? I hope not. That circle that I put in there, remember, blew up. But now look at the elevation. Yeah, it but this one's are not, like, away. touching the actual fire. You're, like, at a nice distance. And I can't, I can barely touch them. Yeah, but you wouldn't sacrifice all of those pieces. No. <laughs> all right, so. So they, they must be good. Like this one, for example, is 188. That one, I know it's still cold. So what do you guys think? About what? About what's going on here. It's pretty cool. It's, it's all cool, it cool until it starts blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> until pieces start uh, flying it everywhere. That makes me think uh, I don't want to put the pieces that I made this way. That I probably make smaller pieces to do the actual. <laughs> what you, you went all out with yours or what? I'm uh, just you know I'm, I'm a little uh, just sensitive do about it. blowing up things you know. If you made it once, you can make it again yeah. and better. Oh yeah, that, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> one of the ways one of the ways that you can think of it is like okay, so like listening to you, so like. All right, I've never done this before. What are the chances that I'm gonna blow my stuff up? Right. Very good. Okay, so this morning I was thinking, all right, I haven't done this since 1993. What are the chances that I'm gonna blow this stuff up? And my response was pretty good. So Vicente, yeah. next week during <laughs> class is when we're going to be doing our firings, right? Yeah, so like this week, I'm doing all of this it's stuff. Like a shot glass with a mug. Next <laughs> week, you guys are individually going to be doing this stuff, and I'm going to be sitting and doing what you guys are doing. I actually have shot glasses. And I'm going to, and I'm going to be answering questions, and I'm going to be saying, "Whoa, don't do that!" Up oh, too late. 
<laughs> okay, so we'll still be on Zoom if we have any questions for you and you can try and help us the you, best you can. You have to be on Zooms. Look at all this cold. This is, this is the one that I'm most afraid of. Actually, I should say um, I'm afraid of all of them blowing up. Welcome to the club. Hey, oh, well, you're very quiet. Uh, still bitter. If this is all, able, this all part of it. If we're not able to do the fire, do we still come in soon? So, yes, because just by attending and seeing what Matt is going to do, seeing what Dan, and go down the list, some of these people, some of you guys are going to do some stuff that is so cool that whenever we meet the following week and start going through all of them, everybody's going to want to know exactly what you did, okay. right? And then some of you, unfortunately, are going to do some things that are going to be like, Okay, please tell me what you did so that I never do that myself. Yeah. And that's just the way it goes. So no, I did something. I did something at the beginning. I did something that you guys know now never to do. Right? Just throw it in the fire. Just throw it in the fire. <laughs> you do not. But, but doesn't it, uh, you would have always been curious about that, right? Yeah. That video you showed us last week where that guy yeah. was exploring uh, native, um, you know, fire pits, uh, yep. he put them right in the fire. First he started on the outer edge, moving closer and closer, but eventually they were right in there on those calls. And they That's all where crashed, we're going. That's where we're going here. We're going in the same direction he is. Well, now, he did the same thing, but he, he, uh, he took the video and cut it and edited it so that his three, four hours of work, whatever time it took him, he represented that in two minutes. Yeah, but he didn't have them on fire bricks, did he? Didn't he have them directly on the calls? That's what well, he had them. After they, after they dried out, he did. So let's do something like a wood um, kind of castle thing. I can't remember right now. I mean, I thought, I thought he, he did have them. I thought he did have them like on a a round brick or something. He had them further away on what looked like bricks. Um, and, and then like. All right, so this is starting to ignite oh. sooner than I wanted. I need to hurry up before it blows like up. Like a TP. <laughs> no, that the guy in the video he had like wood sticks that looked like a house, kind of like. This. Yeah, he uh -huh. was making a teepee with them. Oh, that's They're, not what? It, that, that's a teepee. It's a classic. Classic. There's, classic. there's different types of fires that, that was a teepee. I understand TV. Like TV. No, no, teepee, what like movies? Native Americans. Got it. <laughs> like the structure. You could also, what you do is take your logs and then do them like parallel. So like on top of each other. Okay. Mm. And that actually oh, yeah. gives you a really good fire too. Really, really high fire. Sarah, the, I think Sarah did her. I'm gonna take oh, yeah. this log out. I'm afraid this one might blow it up. Take uh, it out then. Oh, good. It just broke down, so we got further away. The piece is already. So how do we know be when so, to like? You be so slow, so I can still kind of touch it, meaning it's close to 200 degrees. I can still touch it and keep my finger on it. How do we know when it's like time to like start increasing it? Well, what time did I say earlier? Remember when I first put it? I said what Three time? Three hours you said. Yeah, overall. But the first, I would say the first hour, you're gonna take it nice and slow. How long have we been at it? What time is it right now? It's six. Okay, so it's been more like 42 minutes. Yeah. Have we started the fire? So I can't touch these pieces anymore. I can't keep my finger on it. So I'm going to start going a little bit faster. 300 degrees. Did you guys see that blow up? No. Did you guys hear it blow up? Yeah. <laughs> what? Something blew up? Yeah, one yeah. of the leaves. I mean, the, feathers. No, the big, the big, the big one blew up. Oh, oh I thought it was a yeah, feather. The circle. No. It's dead. Uh oh. Do it again. The feathery oh. ones remind me of fish. Wait, which one blew up? The the the, the, one the circles. circles. The circles with the hole? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably a little on the thick side. Now you notice how that's thick, that's half the thickness. Oh, that's the thick one, that's half the thickness. So 
I, I actually made them in different thicknesses to mm -hmm. see what the difference would be. And so far, all the thick ones are blown up. And if you notice, one of the things that we talked about is the thickness. The moisture um, in the inside. So we should make them thinner? Well, the thinner you Whoa. make them, the faster you're going to be able to go. This yeah. guy's 237 degrees. That guy is 231. The can is 300, 200. But I guarantee you the inside is not that hot. This where you kind of relax, take it easy, let the pieces absorb the, smell, the heat. How long, how long does it take for, say, a quarter, quarter inch thickness to dry bone dry? I'm just air dry if it's in here. Air dry depends on your conditions. I mean, I last night, I made uh, all the vases. I made them last night. When I went home to go to bed, I put them inside the shop underneath my fans and I turned my fans on high. So this morning when I showed up, they were pretty, they looked like they were pretty dry. As soon as I got to the shop, I put them outside on my steep wall and the wall that generates heat kind of helped dry them out until 4.30. So I took my time with those. These slabs, they were made right before class. I'm hoping that the ones that I made last night are not gonna blow up. So I'm just taking it slow. Now, I did a um, bisque fire the other day in my kiln, nice and fast. I had dried them out for, I think I had dried them out for a week. And I did a fast bisque. The whole thing went all the way up to cone zero five, which is 1,888 degrees. And it shut off in four hours. So it went from room temperature to 1,800 degrees in four hours. Now, how can it go so fast is the kiln regulates itself at the beginning stages, nice and slow, nice and slow, goes a little slower at the crucial point of 200 and you know between two and 250, and then it starts going faster, faster, faster. So really that's what we're trying to replicate here. Well, I haven't heard anything blow. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say that, right? I was gonna say I haven't heard anything blow up. <laughs> Probably not. And then that bloom. Yep. Do the peels need to be dried? Yeah, if you notice, when you guys showed up to the meeting, I had them on top of that steel grate. I was drying them because I ate that banana right before class. I didn't even plan ahead. So, yeah, I had to. Uh, okay. So see, Mark, how this one is already starting to show flame surrounded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So eventually we will get to like that video that we were seeing, you know, Ooh, the, the, looks really nice, Paula. and you guys have been observing slowly on how I started going with cold surrounded bigger pieces about 30 minutes ago, there was a flame. I moved it back. So if I check, so now we're looking at 266 degrees to 60. Okay, so now does that mean that we're beyond the blow up point? Not really. Remember that big disc that was over here that I read 300 blew up because the inner core was not 300. So we have this one here and I feel some nice heat on there. The inside of the piece way at the bottom reads 222 degrees, which is good. The inside being 220, the outside is 2... 230, so a little bit higher. And that's kind of where we're slowly bringing up. You can see all the flames that I have going on this one. And I haven't heard anything blow up since the last circle. This one says 200, 300, 290, 300 degrees. That's looking pretty good. You also see some fire on this one, on these pieces. You can see how I'm continuing to add now. There's pretty much glowing all around that one piece right there. So slowly. You'll be able to know if it cracks. What's that? Wraps. 
Will you be able to know if it cracks while it's wrapped in the aluminum would just explode? You, you can hear them. You can hear them when they blow up. If you are taking your time and getting them up and they don't blow up and you continue to take your time. So you can see how beautiful it's glowing all around it, right? Mm -hmm. um, how do you, to, just to piggyback on what Paul was saying is uh, yeah. how do you, how do you, um, you don't know until the end when you take it out whether it's cracked or not, or can, is it cracking on the bottom where you can't see, or is it cracking where all the way around? Or yeah, we, that's pretty much going to be the way know. you know. And and what I tell people is like David like some. the reason I'm saying what time did we start, what time is it, is because those are the things that are going to help you. It's like okay, I am two hours into it and I'm getting to this glowing embers all the way around. I'm doing good, all right? Now, there's some people that are going to go a little bit faster, but I'm not ready to go faster. If it comes out that this fire takes me four and a half hours, five hours, and I'm thinking, okay, nothing blew up, I, nothing cracked, I might be able to go a little bit faster. You know, then that's one of those things that happens as we get better and as we make adjustments on everything that we do. So right now I'm playing it slow. So Vicente, yeah. that was before I was just, um, just a single fire pit and yep. we add our pieces once the first fire is down to coals. You want to spread the coals out. Okay. Now, now let's say that if I was to, for example, on that metal bin, if I had a, if I had a fire, and I move the coals out once they settle and I put my piece in the middle, if I put it on very hot ground, on very hot metal, I'm probably gonna crack it. So I would actually have to put a cold brick if I wanna take that approach and then okay. put it on top of the cold brick and let it gently get warm. And then when we're heating it back up because you're adding coals, will we yep. just add slowly more firewood on top of the coals? Not on top of the coals. You're burning on the side the way I am, and you're slowly bringing it in, okay? Now, okay. you're slowly bringing it in, and at some point, yes, you are going to be bringing uh, fire directly to the piece. So this piece is what, two hours now? About. About, and it's 414 degrees, 400, 380, it fluctuates. So I'm just gonna say it's about 400 degrees. When you point not, that when you point that heat measuring tool, are you pointing at the ambers or are you pointing at the, uh, the piece? I'm pointing at the piece. The piece itself says 400 degrees. The embers right next to it says uh, 1,300. There's a difference in the piece works, the clay works on time and temperature. Because right next to it is 1,000 degrees, doesn't mean the piece is a thousand degrees. It's feeding off heat to the piece. The piece is slowly getting warm, continues to get warm. The inner core might be like, for example, the first one, the first one that I blew up. Remember I said the piece was over, it was over 200 degrees. But then I put it into the direct flame. The inner core might have been 70 degrees. The heat has to transfer in this case, to the piece directly. In that case where we did the sagger with that metal, it has to go through the metal, has to go across, and it has to ignite. Once it ignites those things that Naomi put in there, then we're gonna know that that piece is gonna be doing well. So those things are actually gonna catch on fire inside. How many of you think it's gonna blow up? I do. Uh, yeah, I, I do. I don't know, I'm 50-50 on this one because it's been, it's been cooking for a while. Must be. I want to I wanna see it blow up. I look, I, oh, just, low, low. Too fast. I just put it directly into the coals. Can you guys see it or not? Yes. Yeah. It's like right it is, under it. Oh, underneath. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can see it in there? Yeah. 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 Good. All right. It's in there. What if I cover it? That's pushing it. If you cover, well, that's gonna, it's gonna explode. You You're just it's pushing explode? it at this point. Well, now you guys know why there's a whole bunch of them, right? So, so far we've only blown up two pieces. One now, was on purpose. One directly, was on purpose. The other one just happened. Directly in the coals all the way around it. See, if I had like a thermometer, 
like you do, I'd be more comfortable. But just because I'm not knowing is what makes me worry. Right. So if anybody is thinking, all right, I feel comfortable going out. I want to go get one of those. Harbor Freight has an inexpensive one, like 19 or $29, I think. I can't remember. The other reason why I said how long have we been doing this is that's how I want you guys to be gauging it. Now, the first time that I had this, that I did this fire, no, we didn't have anything like this. We just, we just took our time. If you notice, I'm putting wood in there, very little thin pieces. The piece has not blown up. What does that tell you? Totally dried. Totally dry. I was reading after two hours, it got up to close to, it was actually almost 500 degrees, right? So that tells us that it's, it feels comfortable and it tolerates the heat. There it is. It's still, can you guys see it or not? Yeah. It's still there. Starting to change color. So it's getting a, a darker tone. You can see these changing color a little bit also. I wanted to see them blow up. Oh my gosh. So pretty soon we're going to see actual flames and you might see, you might see uh, some of them blow up. You might get your wish. But the one in the bottom won't blow up, would it? Well, it hasn't blown up yet, and I trust that it's not going to blow up anymore. Might be wishful thinking on my part. Let me uh, see if I can pin the temperature on that little guy. So the one that we put in there went from 500 to now 658 within what? How many minutes? Five. putting on some little stuff in there and then I'm slowly going to bring up the flames. I'm still kind of keeping it to the outside. I'm not covering everything yet. So now the fire is going to start to lick it a little bit more. And that little pocket is uh, 370 degrees. So you guys want me to leave it here so you can see them blow up or not? Yes. At least right, one of them. I don't want to see all of them, but I don't want you to fail. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, we're gonna figure out how to grade you, Vicente. You know, all these blowups are certainly lowering. Wait, I can't hear you guys very well because I'm too far. <laughs> Good. I feel that like that's an excuse. Okay. <laughs> were you saying something? We're just saying we're not sure how we're gonna deduct points for all these blowups. Wait a minute. You guys did not. Uh oh, you froze. Uh oh. You froze. Uh oh. I guess he's had enough of us, huh? Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Yes. You can see one of your pits. One of your my, um, big my, phone, my phone has a thermometer on it. Uh yeah, so it shut off because it got too hot. So question for you guys. Um answer. Are you are you learning something? Yeah. yeah you know, I didn't thought that um I'd be able to continue making ceramics after this class was over without being in the studio. So that's kind of cool. It's, it is kind of cool that you do not need anything but clay. Now, there's some people that will actually go and find their own clay and work that way. Check this out. They haven't blown up yet. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. For so for next week, when we log on onto class, do you want us yeah. to like already have like some coals burning? Do you want us to like already have like our stuff prepared? Like, what do you want us to like come into class with? So Besides, obviously, be, all the materials. That's going to be up to you. The minimum, the minimum is to think about where I was. Okay, so I had all my wood ready. I had all my pieces ready. Uh, no, we're going to use some. Let's, we're going to try to put them. We're going to try to put feathers on one of these little guys. See work? if it'll work. Uh, I think we're almost there. 
But in answer and finishing your question, so you're ready. If you start the fire before class, better for you because you can see how I started the fire basically when you guys came in and it just took me a little bit longer, right? Uh, I am okay. gonna finish before class is over. I'm gonna finish before 9.30, I think. But I'm gonna be fine if you're exactly where I was. Okay. Now, I would recommend if you want to decrease the chances of your pieces blowing up, right? You can put them in your oven at uh, 100 degrees for 30 minutes, you know? Making sure that nothing is nothing that everything is completely bone dry. Mm -mm. Not not <laughs> hot enough yet. Ooh, look at this. Look at that. Ooh, it's grilled. You think it's fish? <laughs> it's right it, look, it looks like you're grilling fish. Actually, I take it back. I'm gonna put them on top. You can see how they're getting smoked already. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to move this down, hopefully without breaking any of them. All right, so now I'm kind of falling behind because I need to, at this point, I need to start pretty much smothering everything with fire. So I'm going to work fast, okay? So how long have we been at it, Paula? Um, 52 So minutes. 52 left, you mean, or? Left, left. so yeah. two hours and eight minutes so far. It's in. All right, so two hours and eight minutes, and you guys have been monitoring how I've been taking it easy, right? Mm -hmm. and, two, and at that point, I feel comfortable, and I'm starting to build a fire. I'm going to let all that wood ignite. I'm not going to keep covering it up. I'm going to put some little guys in here. I'm going to let them ignite and then uh, hopefully be able to do some feathers on these. Yep. All right, so it tells me that it's, uh, that it's over a thousand degrees. And look, see how it's burning the hair? Yes. Yep. All right, so it's burning the hair, which is a good sign. I mean, look, we can do this type of firing with nothing else. Now, I could get it a little bit hotter, and there you see my hair getting burned. Are you looking? I'm looking. Um, I yeah. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. So this, so this one here, well over a thousand degrees. Okay, because it's nice. Check it out. These are pine needles. Okay, oh, wow. pine needles. They're completely dry. I'm gonna go ahead and smother the whole thing. So now it's getting really hot, right? But it also is gonna suffocate the fire. And now, good, 13, 13, 1,300 degrees. That's bisque firing, you know, in an open fit to see it glow like that. That is pretty cool. I'm yes. gonna smoke this one black. And then there's the little sagger over there. So smoke it black, let that, let that catch, okay? Let it catch up. You can see it going into reduction, so that's gonna make that piece turn black. I'm just gonna let it ignite a little bit. There we go. And then I'm gonna smother the whole thing. 
So that's going to send it into reduction. That piece should be nice and black. Uh, and then we'll open it tomorrow. Uh, you guys might be able to see this change, okay? Well, So that goes into reduction. Yeah. I'm gonna let it reduce for a little bit. I'm gonna go through the first. That one had steel wool and stuff, so I'm gonna quench it. Do we need to do the reduction or can we just let it like die out? On you can let it die out. But okay. I wanna show you guys on something. I don't know if it's gonna come out good, but it, if it does, then we're gonna find out in a little bit. This is the one that was wrapped with the foil. Look at the lines from the, the copper. See the copper? Uh, kind of orangey tones. Some red blushes, some line marks from the copper right on there. Covered it with pine needles. And uh, then when they started igniting, I covered it with this bin. And we get to see what I got. So there's the piece. So you can see the clay. That is very cool. So. And was that with just pine needles over it? You said. Well, it was the pine needles that gave it the black marks. This guy was in a metal can, and I have no idea what happened here. But you see the little sagger that I built. Oh, look at the, the look at the can. Even has good co good color. So, oh, another can in there. Look at that, and look at the like gold, wavy. look at the sheen on it. Nice. That's very cool. Did you burnish that? Didn't burnish it, it was just my nail, that I was running my nail when I was making okay. it. So that's what, that's what, um, and these are things that you probably have at home already. Metal cans, and it fit perfect, so that's where it went. Whenever this piece was nice and hot, we dumped a whole bunch of pine needles into it and then sent it into reduction and covered it up. So that actually looks very cool. Just the pine needles that are burned. You can hear it's nice and strong because it had not been bisque-fired. And here is the piece and the wrappings on it. I don't see a lot of color from the materials themselves. This is the end result. Here are the results. This one was in the little tiny sagger with the metal cans. Got a beautiful black, some beautiful little marks. This one I did not wax because it looks awesome just the way it is. Did get to temperature but we could um, smoke hair on there. Feather, another feather. This one was wrapped with aluminum foil, it had some copper lines in there, also had steel wool and I did wax this with a ceramic tile and stone wax. This one had nothing and I love the way this looked. Beautiful blacks, beautiful grays. This was in the uh, 30, I think 25 gallon drum.
This one was just in the open fire that was reduced with the hay. Also wax, beautiful marks. And then just some slabs. Able to get some awesome blacks. These were burnished. Back to basics. No kilns, open pits, 